Hello, I'm Andrew Brace, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest Breeders' Masterclass brought to you by Yukonuba in conjunction with Dog World Newspaper. These masterclasses enable breeders around the world to access online expert opinions on a variety of important subjects. Through the Yukonuba Dog World Breeders' Masterclasses, enthusiasts can meet, maybe for the first time, well-known personalities whose knowledge of specific topics then becomes available to them. This comes to you from Long Beach in California, where Yukonuba is hosting its Yukonuba World Challenge competition, in which 41 dogs from different countries will compete to win best in show at what is now acknowledged as one of the most prestigious events in the canine calendar. In its quest to bring responsible and successful breeders, judges and handlers together from all around the world, Yukonuba has given us the opportunity to draw from some of the most experienced people in the sport. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our four expert panellists. Ron Menneker first served on the American Kennel Club board from 1996 to 1998. Elected again in the year 2000, he became vice chairman in 2001 and has served as chairman since March 2002. He has been actively involved in the sport of purebred dogs for more than 40 years. Ron has bred and exhibited giant schnauzers, Bedlington Terriers and Norfolk Terriers. He is the show chairman for the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, past show chairman of the Westminster Kennel Club Show and is an honorary member of the Kennel Club in Great Britain. An AKC judge since 1994, Ron has judged at more than 200 AKC confirmation shows. His many judging assignments have taken him across the country and around the world, including six world dog shows in recent years. Ron, we appreciate you giving up your very valuable time. It's great to be here, Randy. From Holland, we welcome Gwen Hekushoven. Gwen's family has been breeding Grand Basset Griffon Vendéen since 1991 and their petite cousins since 2006. They have won Best in Show at the Dutch Breed Specialty for more than 10 years now and have also won Best of Breed at the French Specialty eight times. Every year since 2005, their dogs have been top hound in the Netherlands and in 2006 and 2009, they won top dog of all breeds. Gwen has campaigned a Petit Basset Griffon Vendéen to Dog of the Year in 2009, and this is the dog she'll be showing in the Yukonuba World Challenge. When not showing her dogs, Gwen is studying very hard and should qualify as a vet in April of this year. So welcome to you, Gwen. Thank you, Andrew. <coughs> We're delighted to welcome from Yukonuba, Richard Learwood. Richard is the Global Marketing Director for Yukonuba. He spent 18 years at Procter & Gamble with six years specializing in pet care. Formerly the Managing Director of IAMS Co UK, he is now based in Geneva where the future of Yukonuba is his prime concern. Indeed. Thank you for joining Thank us, you, Richard. Andrew. <coughs> From Puerto Rico, we welcome Roberto Vélez Pico. Roberto has been actively involved in the world of purebred dogs for over four decades, becoming an FCI all-breed judge in 1985. He holds numerous official positions, including executive director of his country's governing body and member of the FCI Show and Judges Commission. Prior to concentrating on his judging and official roles, he was an accomplished breeder and exhibitor, primarily of Afghan hounds. As an international all-rounder, he has travelled the world, judging at most of our major shows. Thank you for joining us, Roberto. Thank you. First of all, Ron, perhaps you'd give us a little bit of an insight into where did this whole idea spring from? The concept of the Yukonuba World Challenge. How did it come about and um, how did it grow so quickly? Uh, this concept first came about approximately three years ago, at which point uh, the concept was raised uh, by Yukonuba 
as to whether or not any thought had, had maybe been given to holding some kind of an international competition in the United States. Richard, do you remember this conversation at Crufts that grew into this incredible event that we're here for this weekend? I was delighted with how warmly uh, Ron and Dennis embraced the, the concept. Um, we've been partners with the OKC for many years and this seems to be a very logical venue to, to build the idea of the World Challenge into. Um, so having discussed it initially with Ron, we then uh, uh, consulted with the FCI because the FCI play a critical role uh, in this as well. Um, and the idea was born um, and we moved very quickly uh, to launched the first event that December here in 2000 and three short years later um, we're here at the third event so we're all incredibly proud of, of what has been done and I think it's testimony to a great partnership between the AKC between, and the FCI between Yukonuba and many of the participating kennel clubs around the world. The logistics Ron of actually putting something together from like a conversation at Crufts to holding the first Yukonuba World Challenge it must have been alarming we thought, Yukonuba and the American Kennel Club, that um, we could end up with something that was uh, endorsed and, and certainly uh, would give the rest of the world an opportunity to see our dogs here in the United States and, and for us to appreciate the breeding that was taking place around the world. Gwen, as an exhibitor, do you see the Yukonuba World Challenge as, as just another dog show? or as something on an entirely different level? No, it's really different. As this is the first time you are immediately competing to all the rest of the top dogs in the world. You see, you see dogs now that you only know from the papers and from the internet, and now you meet them and you see them and you have the chance to compete to, against them and speak with the people. We had a, a, a brief conversation over breakfast this morning and I asked you if you were showing at the other shows and, and very interested when you said, no, no, I'm saving my dog for the Yukonuba World Challenge. I want yes. him to be fresh and I want him to give his best there so you're not going to waste him on, on any other shows, with due respect to all the other shows, of, of course. <laughs> Roberto, you've come from Puerto Rico, you were an exhibitor, you're a judge, a kennel club official. How do you perceive the Yukonuba World Challenge in, in South America? What, what purpose does it serve in your eyes? The purpose of the uh, Yukonuba World Challenge uh, brings the opportunity to many breeders to be together in one arena under one roof, let's say, in this hotel where we're staying, and uh, to, to, uh, to have a more knowledge about the breeding programs that each country may have uh, established. And it makes also the opportunity for all the judges also to see more uh, different dogs from all over the world under one roof, which is very different. Mm -hmm. When you go to one country to another, you see dogs from that area. Mm -hmm. But here, you get to see the best among, among and, and the best. You're, you're one of the lucky guys who, who's actually judging a section, I think, aren't you? Yes, I'm yeah. judging one section, yes, yeah. sir. Ron, how do you feel that the Yukonuba World Challenge is, is in a position to influence breeders and breeding programs? Well, I think for the first time, certainly here in the United States, the dogs are being brought to the people. And the number of dogs that are being shown here in the United States, um, aside from the conversations being taking place, we're seeing uh, individuals wanting to introduce new breeding stock into their breeding program. So they're seeing firsthand the animal they're getting firsthand the opportunity to speak to the breeder. Um, and there, is, uh, there are those people who have already, you know, agreed to, to breed and, uh, you know, introduce a particular dog into their breeding program. Um, and that brings a whole new dimension to the idea of um, sort of a worldwide view in terms of uh, breeding, uh, rather than just uh, local people continuing to, to breed their dogs with other local people. So, so indirectly, the Yukonuba World Challenge is, is serving to, to enlarge the gene pool of so many of our breeds, Absolute, effectively. Absolutely, I mean, it, real, it truly is an opportunity to do that, which in many ways, um, in my opinion, helps uh, even address some of the health issues that exist. Um, it also gives people an opportunity firsthand to see dogs 
um, from other countries that perhaps uh, are not under the same umbrella as those here in the United States. For example, you know, we tend for those breeds that are standard call for either cropping and docking. I think people are beginning to learn that that's a man-made kind of thing, doesn't change the standard of the, of the breed. We've seen in the case of the Cocker Spaniel with the, with the tail, uh, an American judge, you know, uh, putting that dog up to, f uh, to best to breed, a very well-known American judge to best to breed with, notwithstanding the fact that, you know, you don't tend to see Cocker Spaniels in the United States with, with long tails. Because of your breed standard. Because of our breed standard. But people, they're willing to adapt once they recognize uh, that, you know, it isn't going to really change or affect their breeding program, and it really doesn't impact or affect the qualities or the standard of that breed. Um, so it goes to the whole area of education, introducing new dogs into the breeding program, and certainly allowing the folks who come to visit the United States a chance to see our dogs, speak to our breeders, and conversely, an opportunity for our breeders to speak to the folks around the world. Richard, from the company's perspective. Clearly, it's a great opportunity for us to reach out to the breeder community globally. Um, but we did go into it with our eyes open to the, the, the greater potential. I'm just delighted um, to hear it being played back by everyone here and, yeah, and, yeah. and seeing it being a reality. But the, the, uh, as the world gets smaller and smaller, um, I, I think the Yukonuba World Challenge very much sort of focuses everything that's going on in the dog world at the moment. Ron touched on the health issues, and we, we tend to sort of, through this medium now, everyone has suddenly seen everything yeah. kind of crystallise in a way. Gwen, in, in the Netherlands, for example, when, when the Yukonuba World Challenge was first born, um, were people sort of terribly excited about this new concept? I think the first time people didn't really know what it was. No, of and course. when the Something people totally came different. back from it, then we heard, of course, you ask, how was it? And then you heard, oh, yes, yeah, really exciting. And now people are really showing for it. I know yeah. some people are. I bet there are a lot of people in the Netherlands this weekend that wish that they were in your mm -hmm. place. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying good luck and every, like at the winner show last weekend, and everybody knew you were going. So yeah. everybody's saying, well done. But it, it, isn't, it, isn't it interesting in a sport where we hear so much about sort of jealousy and rivalry that, that this event, is, as it, it brings people in a country together mm -hmm. because they want to cheer yes. on you know, their national representative, mm -hmm. which you know, has, has got to be marvellous for the sport, yes. the sense of national identity and forget sort of old rivalries, mm -hmm. as it were. So great, that's, a, that's a, another ec excellent consequence. Roberto, what are your feelings on seeing the Yukonuba World Challenge in the same place at the same time each year? I would like to see some flexibility probably in location. Maybe that will uh, improve the brand in other countries probably because I, I come from also from marketing and uh, the more the diversification uh, diversified uh, market you have, the more knowledge of the brand mm -hmm. becomes around. So I would like to see maybe the, the uh, Okanuba World Challenge in another country or in the United States in other part on the East Coast, for example, again. Mm -hmm. Well, Ron, the rest of, for the most part, the FCI have world dog shows each year where there's an opportunity for dogs to get together from countries all over. So they have an international event. We had, in my opinion, something sorely lacking here in the United States, no international event. So I think that uh, having the event here in the United States uh, gives us an opportunity in some way to put together our world, to put together a world dog show here in the United States, which doesn't exist right now. Um, so I, I think, uh, certainly for the foreseeable future. I think we ought to, to continue to grow this concept because I think there's so many positive unintended consequences coming out of the show, you know, to pick up what Richard was saying. I mean, when you think about the health and the welfare of the dog, Yukonuba tries through its products good nutrition to increase and, and assist, you know, and help with the health of the dog. We are looking, you know, I know the breeders are looking at the breeding side, introducing 
some new blood, new blood into their stocks, increase their breeding lines, improve their breeding lines, improve the health. So I think those consequences are proven to be very, very uh, beneficial. And to Roberto's part, which I, I certainly don't disagree with this part, um, ne not next year, but the following year in 2011, we will be moving the show to Orlando, Florida on the East Coast, which will have, as Roberto says, will I think even enhance the show further um, for two reasons. One, um, folks from Europe and South America, it will cut their travel time down by six or seven hours. I think it'll make, make it a lot more palatable. Secondly, the show has grown so significantly, we need more space and we will have up to a million square feet in a pretty much standalone facility. So I think we are certainly improving the show. I think we're enhancing the show. And for the time being, um, I think it makes sense to be in the United States, not because the United States should dominate the show, but more because we have never had and still do not have, with the exception of the World Challenge, uh, an international event in the United yeah. States. And Richard, I presume that you're very happy with the status quo. Do you envisage any possible changes that you'd like to share with us? We're very, very happy with what we're I'm doing sure, here. I'm sure. Both the FCI and the AKC have offered us tremendous support to make this happen. I think it's important that the event is integrated into an existing major show um, because I think uh, everybody's here. It adds something to, to what's already going on. For me, our priority is to increase the reach of the show, uh, increase the reach of the important messages that we want to uh, deliver and in, in, increase the reach of our relationships with breeders. The key is how we bring the world challenge to life in each of the participating countries. And we've sure. seen some tremendous examples around the world of, of how the world challenge is being used to reach out. I'll, I'll talk uh, about my own country briefly. Uh, and I think the use of the championship stakes in the UK has been a great tool where we've reached out through all 26 championship shows. The world challenge is alive you know, every weekend, every other weekend, um, building up to this. Now, it's up to each, we, we, we've said it's up to each kennel club to decide how they, how they want to organize their entrant. Um, but I do think the example in the UK is a particularly good one um, because that's spreading the world challenge and it's making it bigger and bigger. That, mm -hmm. That's my priority. When we're discussing the, the, the qualifiers who actually compete at the Yukonuba World Challenge, uh, do you feel that there should be a, a standard method by which each country's representative is, is chosen, or do you feel that there should be a certain amount of, of flexibility um, with each country, which is how it stands at the moment? We're, we're happy to work with how each country's kennel club, what, what they think is appropriate, mm -hmm. yeah, because that, that enables their participation in what we do. I cited the UK as a great example because I, for, for me, we've got tremendous reach there. We're connecting with far more, more people. So if you ask me, I'd love to see that model applied everywhere. Sure. Um, but we will continue on the basis that it's, it's up to the partnering kennel clubs that we work with to make this happen yeah. to decide how it's done. Ron, you're quite happy with that flexibility. I, I agree with Richard um, that it's important for each country um, to, to buy in, and I think they have, and I think it's important for them to select the, 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 you know, select the, the dog to participate. I don't think there's anything wrong, and certainly we do this, is to try to lay out a little bit of a criteria so that they understand, you know, the dog that's representing them is, is truly, you know, competitive, and, and, and they are. And we've seen quite an improvement in the last few years that we've had the show sure. in terms of the quality of the dogs. Mm -hmm. I think people have bought into such a degree that m the countries don't want a dog representing them, carrying their flag and participating. If they're not up to a standard, sure. that's going to be competitive. So I think it's bought have been self-cleansing in that respect. Uh, you lay out a criteria, and, and over time, people buy into the concept, they're excited about the show, um, they're going to send you their best. They, they want their dog to win. Yeah, and we're coming back to the point that we, we discussed with Gwen earlier on, you know, that there has been this sort of tremendous surge in national pride through, through, through this 
event and the, I mean the sight of all those dogs and all those flags is it's quite tearful actually isn't it? It is, it is. yeah it's, it's an amazing scene um, our version of the Olympics shall we shall we say? Oh but far um, better. But far better <laughs> um, but it is quite a spectacle to behold the opening, yeah. opening ceremony and it does I think it, it, it stirs people. Sure. Sure. Gwen you're, you're an exhibitor um, and uh, obviously involved with the competition this weekend. Do you feel that since the advent of the Yukonuba World Challenge that exhibitors have become more aware of Yukonuba as, as a company that wants to become involved and, and help the sport forward? Yes, I think so. I think not only in this event but overall Yukonuba is trying to get more into the dog world and really the breeders into the breeders world and they try to with the pink color everywhere and with, uh, with the sponsoring of shows. And now because they are organizing this event, people are really talking about it. So they are talking about the Knuba World Challenge and then you hear the brand name again and then people get aware of it. They, they will go and buy the food. So they, does they know that they, that maybe they think they have better chances if they are give, eating the food as well, so. Well, presumably they will do because <laughs> The, the food is, is a proven quality product. Yes, it is. Yes. And the fact that so many of the top dogs in the past mm -hmm. have been fed on a, on, on a Yukonuba yes. regimen, I mean, has, has, has proved that fact. Roberto of South America, I mean, the image, image of this company that's really helping the sport now, same there? Yes, yes. By the way, uh, we have uh, improved in the entries because uh, locally, you know, Puerto Rico is a small island and uh, we depend on many on the entries of the show. so. People are, they know that the dog of the year will go, will represent uh, Puerto Rico at Duke mm -hmm. So we have not even more dogs in, in the ring, but I, be, I think they are doing much better breeding, you know, in, in, in the island to have better dogs to bring to the shows. Can you imagine um, any, any possible ways of even Im improving? The, the Yukonuba World Challenge beyond what it is now? I think what uh, Mr. Benaker have done here, it's terrific. It's, it's okay. I, I think it's a very uh, beautiful set. It's, uh, everything's manageable, well managed. So I, I, I don't see any, any other thing that could we, that could improve uh, what he has Do done. Do you have any here. secrets up your sleeve, Richard? Wow. You said earlier, Andrew, about the, the quality of our nutrition. That comes from a principle of good enough isn't. We're always striving to be better, sure. um, striving to Im improve the quality of our foods and the quality of everything we do. Um, so from our, our diets to our packaging to our puppy educational training videos mm -hmm. yeah, and, and what we do in the breeder world and the show world is, is included. So I think this year's show is going to be better than last year's and last year's was better than the one before. Uh, we will continue to learn. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the value of this event in terms of bringing breeders together and it's an important opportunity for us to learn as well and we will do and we'll I hope go from strength to strength. It's been very interesting Richard th th this weekend to see uh, all these people from so many countries coming together almost in this kind of clubby sort of Yukonuba family um, meeting up with friends from so, m so many different countries and backgrounds. Um, this must give you a great sense of satisfaction. I think you know it, it is uh, Spending the time together in, in the hotel here, um, uh, doing stuff together, interacting, uh, the, the, all the examples that uh, Ron talked about, um, yeah, is, is, is building a bond, I think, with the breeders and, and our brand, and I think that's very important. Um, everyone here uh, can play a key role as an ambassador for us, spread, spread the word. Sure. Um, but it's ultimately down to a, a test of uh, the nutrition. Okay? The nutrition will make a difference. Okay? Uh, we believe that three things make the difference ultimately. The genetics of the dog, the dog's environment, that's, you know, it's care and it's nutrition. Sure. Yeah? We play a big role uh, in, in, in a third of those in terms of its nutrition. And uh, yeah, that's our role. We think it's very important. So there we are. A little bit of an insight into the Yukonuba World Challenge. Well, I need to thank our four panelists for sharing their ideas with us today. Ron? Gwen, Richard and Roberto for sparing us time in their very busy schedules this weekend. 
And I wonder, next year, will you be here? <laughs>